Once you have downloaded your inventory template, it needs to be completed. The first thing to note is that within the Amazon template, there are some required fields and some optional fields. The required fields tend to be things like well, the really vital information like the SKU and the brand name and the quantity. The optional fields contain some really quite important information such as product description and bullet points, but also a lot of less important fields which are for product discovery, for example here, target audience base, power plug type and search keywords. If you haven't got time to fill these out the first time you do an upload, you can of course complete them later. In the inventory template file which you download from Amazon, there are a number of tabs which I'll now go through. These give useful information about how to complete the file and also the valid values which you can add to it. The first tab has some instructions about how to complete this file. The second tab gives guidance about requirements Amazon has for the images which can be added to products. There is a tab with some example data. This sheet here with data definitions tells you the optional and required fields. The template is what you will fill in. The browse data here gives information on the browse node and category which you selected when creating this upload file. And the value values sheet gives you a list of the valid values that can be added when you are completing the fields. Let's now return to the template tab and we're going to go from the fields that need to be filled in from left to right. In the left hand most column is the product feed type. This is populated with a drop down or the categories which you selected when creating the template. And you can hear it says recreation ball. If we go to inventory, add product via upload and select a category, this product type here comes from here, the product type, and also this is the browse nodes ID, which we'll discuss in a moment. So if you want to find a new browse nodes and new product types, you can actually get the information from this page. The item SKU is a free text field which you create with your product number. It's a good idea to not start an item SKU with a zero because that will get stripped out from Excel. Personally, I like to start them with a letter because then it is always text, whereas if it's just a number, it can be treated by Excel as text or a number. The brand name is populated with a drop down of the brands that you've created in brand registry. If you want another name of a brand here, you can just type over it. External product ID and external product ID type. This is the product identifier. In this case, it's either variations on a barcode or the Amazon standard identification number. If you're trying to create a listing which already exists in another Amazon marketplace, you can use the ASIN. EAN is the European article number, which is the European barcode. ISBN is a book specific barcode. And the UPC is the unified product code, which is what is used in the USA and other parts of the world. The item name is the product title. The manufacturer is the item manufacturer, which could be the same as the the brand name or could be different. The recommended browse node is Amazon's version of a category. The browse node or the category you selected when you were creating the product will be here in the drop down. You could have selected multiple categories when you created the template. If you want to put another browse node in there, then this can be found from the Amazon website. Under inventory, add products to upload. When you select the types of products you want to sell, for example, baby activity books, the browse node will appear here. You can add multiple browse nodes, which when you download your product template down here, and then when you open your template will appear in this list. A second option is to consult a browse node mapping table. This is a list of browse nodes in a spreadsheet format. Here you can see, you'll see the node path or the category, and then you have the browse nodes in different European countries. There is a similar spreadsheet for Amazon USA and the other Amazons. I have included the link in the course notes. The quantity is the stock quantity of the products you are creating. If you are creating FBA items, this must be set to zero or will automatically become a merchant fulfilled item. It is obligatory for products to have a main image. The image must be hosted on a web accessible location and it must be the full path. What I mean by that is it must be a full URL with an extension on the end. If you're looking for a free hosting company, Company, one you can use is this Imager web hosting site which provides free web hosting. If you upload your image to Imager and go to the image, you'll see this kind of image in the search bar at the top. This is not a full URL and will not work with Amazon. However, if you click on the image and do open image on new tab, you will see the full path here with the extension which you can then copy into your spreadsheet. The fields A to J on this spreadsheet are the required fields and you can see they're in this emerald green color. The fields to the right are the optional fields. The first set of optional fields are additional images. Adding additional images to a listing can really improve its conversion rate and also give more information to your customers. So they're very much recommended. The next section here is for variations. Variant listings are listings like this one where 
multiple colors are available from the same listing page. Setting up these variation listings is good for conversion rate as buyers can buy multiple different options from the same page, but they are trickier to set up and we should be going through this in a separate video. The next section is titled basic and as the name says, it's some pretty standard stuff about a product. The most important bits here would be product description and part number. There's also a field here if you're updating or deleting. If you want to delete a product, you would put delete in this column here. Um, and then you would need no extra data apart from the SKU number. Um, however, it's, if you're deleting products, it's best to use the inventory loader file. Some of these fields are free text, but others have but others have valid values, and these valid values can be seen in the valid value tab. So if we take age range description here, the options that you need to fill in are kid, adult, baby, or youth. Age range, so you would need to select from here from this drop down. The fields in product discovery help Amazon do the filtering in its product search. There are also some sections here like bullet points which appear on the listing itself. Some of these fields will appear in technical details on the listing. So if we look at a listing here, bullet points will appear here and about this item. And down here, there's technical details and some of these discovery fields will appear here. Moving to the right in this sheet, product enrichment and dimensions are also fields which are used in Amazon search and also in the technical details. The fulfillment section gives all the information which is required to define an item as an FBA item. For something to be FBA, you need to set the fulfillment center to Amazon underscore EU. In the USA, this would be Amazon underscore NA. The dimensions and weight to here will define how much it costs to store and to ship an item. Compliance is regulatory information. It includes information on toy safety, which will appear on the listing. Country of origin, which is used in duty if an item is going cross-border. Item weight and unit of measure. And information which will be used when accepting a product into an FBA warehouse. So here we have battery information and there also will be hazardous chemical information. There we have hazardous chemical information. You may find if you have to fill in this information, then it will not be accepted into an FBA warehouse. The offer information is the information specific to the offer that you've listed against an ASIN. It includes things like the merchant shipping group. The merchant shipping group is a template which you apply to a product which sets the shipping rate. It has the condition and the tax code. You need to set the tax codes up in a separate part of, the, of Amazon. Here, under is gift wrap available, you can set whether you want to add gift wrap to a product or not. You will need to also enable gift wrap on your account. This template which we created was a multi-market template and therefore it is required that the pricing information is added for these six different marketplaces that this template covers. For each marketplace, there is a sale price and a sale date start and end and a normal offer price. Note that the offers in the UK and the EU are in different currencies. The final section is the B2B section. Here you can set your business prices and the thresholds at which you'll offer better prices. So the first column here is business price. And then you can choose here whether you want to have a fixed discount on certain bounds or a percentage discount on certain bounds. This is your lower band and this is your quantity price. So in this case, the normal price is 10. If they buy five, they'll get them for eight. If they buy 10, they'll get them for six, etc. If instead of fixed price, this is set to percent, this will mean that the normal price is 10, but if you buy five, you'll get 10% off. And if you buy 10, you'll get 15% off, etc. Though this is a multi-market template, these discounts will only apply to the home marketplace. So if you upload it into the UK, these will be the discounts you get for the UK business prices. You will have to do the France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Netherlands prices separately. Once a file has been completed, it needs to be uploaded. If you go to Inventory, Add Product File Upload, and then click on the tab Upload Your Inventory File. Select Inventory Files for Specific Categories. Choose your file here and click Upload. Once your file has been successfully processed, it will appear here under Monitor Upload Status. There will be a file that you can download which will give you the details of the products which have been uploaded successfully and those which have issues. Those that have issues will appear in Complete Your Drafts in the catalogue. Let us just have a quick look at a processing report. So here's the processing report. It said here that the number of records that processed was the same as the number uploaded. So there was no problem with the file formatting. For each product SKU that has problems, it will give the error details. There will be an error code and also information on what that error is. 
So for example here, on this particular SKU, your seller account was not approved to offer seller fulfilled products in this category. So that means that the only way that you could sell this product in that category would be as an FBA item.